The Flash moves pretty fast, and your Lego version can too. I'm going to break down exactly how to achieve a result just like this one right now. Let's start with what Lego configurations you need to get the job done. So first off, you're going to need plenty of brick pieces, and don't worry about them being genuine. These are 100% fake Lego. Sorry Lego, I'm not made of money. Right now, look at the colours in your figure. You basically want to break this down into stack form, and we're going to be using one by one bricks. So you will essentially end up with a stick of different colours. Make several of these. I'll explain why later. Next up, you want to expand your stack. So with the same colour layers to match your minifigure, make a 2 by one stack, a 3 by one stack, and a 6 by one stack. And we'll also want to make a sloping block too, like this one. So you want to gradually taper the layers out at the bottom. Additionally to this, I like to have a few smaller pieces to make a little speed trail too, that follows the main block. So grab yourself a few extra bricks and make a few little pieces like this. As well as all this Lego, if you want to add a bit of smoke to your movement, then get yourself some cotton toy stuffing ready too. Now you have all your pieces, I'll show you how to put them to use and create this really cool high speed effect. If you happen to have multiple versions of the same minifigure, you can begin your motion, as I have, with a double character for one frame. This eases in to the motion blur before we even begin adding our block colour shapes in. I like it, but it's not essential. If you don't have two of the same minifigure, don't worry about this step. After this frame, you'll begin with the blocks. Firstly, we're using that tapered sloping piece. So move your character forwards, stick this behind and take another picture. And then we're going to start extending the colour trail behind the character. And this is where all the other block pieces come in that we created. So, move your character forward again, take your 3 by one block and put that in between the diagonal block and your character. We will then extend the trail again so that the next picture will have the 6x1 block. I think that this is as long as you need to go with your trail, but this will depend on how you want your character to move. I personally think zooming around in circles is a more dynamic movement, but bending our colour trail with blocks this chunky isn't possible. So that is where the smaller 1x1 and 2x1 stacks come in. You can use these to change the shape of the colour trail path and allow your character to turn. When your character comes to a stop, you'll want to start reducing the distance it moves forwards with each frame, and then also reduce the length of the trail behind so that it eventually completely disappears. You can use the tiny trail pieces we made here to really ease it out at the end as well. And then if you want to make things look even more realistic, have your character react to the sudden stop by stabilising their position over a few more frames. So you might be wondering how to use those smaller pieces to extend your colour trail and make that work. Well, using the little pieces that we made, this again isn't essential and it is personal choice, but you literally place these behind the main block of colour and trail them behind, removing the one that is closest to the block in each new frame and shifting the others forward until they have eventually all disappeared. And this will give a nice extra bit of movement to your motion. I really like the effect that it gives, but as I've said before, it's all personal preference. So now you've mastered moving your coloured blocks to achieve a nice trail behind your character, you might want to add even more detail with some smoke. This is most effective at the start of the movement when your character is accelerating at speed. To add the smoke in is pretty simple. You just gradually build up the amount of fluff over a few frames. Keep it low down on the table to start with and then make it a bit more cloud shaped over several pictures. And then start reducing the amount back down over the next few frames until it has fully disappeared. And this will give the illusion of a puff of smoke or dust being kicked up due to the speed of movement of your character. Now this is a lot of effort for maybe only a little bit of aesthetic reward, but I like to push the limits. So you remember the plastic flashes that came with our minifigure character? I didn't want them to go to waste, and if you watch Flash move in the show, there are trails of light flowing behind too. So I photographed the Flash separately and then cut this out in Photoshop. 
I then also adjusted the colour, making it a bit more vibrant, adding an outer glow and painting some white at the centre to make it really feel more alive and like an actual light source. I saved this out as a PNG and then brought it into After Effects, duplicated it a few more times so I had several flashes and then lined them up on top of the frames of stop motion animation to make it look like they were part of the colour trail too. Again, this is not necessary and I just did it to show how you can push your work and how sometimes details can add that extra wow. Mission completed. So now you should be equipped to animate your own character moving fast with a speed trail in LEGO. If you want to help me make even more videos like this, there are multiple ways you can support me down below. Also, just liking and sharing my videos helps too. Thank you.